Hey everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the Colorado Springs real estate market stats for October 2020. Now, most of these stats are coming from the MLS because that's where we can pull the data to sit down and dissect it. And of course, I got the Colorado Springs expert, Jenny Bayless, on the call with me. Jenny, good morning. Good morning. How's it going? It's going really good. So I actually recorded the Denver market update yesterday and I have purposely not looked at anything from Colorado Springs. I'm curious to see your take on there and how I'm, I'm guessing it'd be a lot similar to Denver versus uh, not similar, but I'm curious to see the stats. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So be ready for some questions. Hope you had your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So Colorado Springs saw another really strong performance during the month of October. Um, you know, usually at this point, we would expect to see some sort of seasonality come into play and slow, to, slow things down a little bit, but we're just really not seeing that. Is that kind of the same thing that you're seeing in Denver, Chris? Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing some seasonality, um, but not nearly as much as we've seen in non-COVID years. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's all that pent-up demand, I think, is still kind of overflowing into the fall months, it seems like. Yeah, I think that, and I think just these low interest rates, I mean, it's a good time to go out there and buy for a long-term buy and hold. Very good, yeah. So just kind of going into some of the, the standard um, trends that we, we tend to look at, if we are going into the showing trends, it's kind of interesting that uh, Colorado Springs in October has seen the highest uh, number of showings per per listing um, in the past several years at at about twelve on average per per property. That's that's a lot. <laughs> and and do this because yeah, keep in mind because we have a lot of people listening to the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. And so, as a quick reminder, listeners can go click the show notes, the graphs, and the main numbers Jenny is referencing are on the blog post. But Jenny, I can see the graph, but but paint the picture for the listeners as to what it looks like now versus, you know, the last, what, 2017, 2018, 2019 years? Yeah, so um, 17, 18, and 19, they have very similar shapes to them. So uh, they kind of crest uh, around the springtime, which makes sense. And then they sort of level out uh, for, for the remainder of the year. Whereas this year, um, it's pretty high in January, but then it dips extremely low come March, April, and that's due to all the COVID restrictions that we have been, been seeing. And then it bounces right back up in about May timeframe, and that's when um, the restriction of, of you know, the stay-at-home orders were, were loosened a little bit. And from May to, to present, it is just on a constant upward trajectory. And normally for the last couple of years, and this is how it's been in the Springs and the Denver chart looks the same, it usually starts going slightly down coming late summer. Like in October, the last couple of years, you've been what, right around seven or eight showings per property. This year, you're at 20. Last, or I'm sorry, not 20, 12. I was looking at the, in 2020, you're at 12 showings per property is what I'm trying to say. And that's just, I mean, that's uh, what, four more showings per property, which is a pretty significant increase. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what that says out there is that there's a lot of people out there buying. And so I think it's, hey, two things, there's lower inventory and there's more people out there shopping. Exactly. So you'll have to make your, your offers extremely strong because there's a lot of other people that are are looking at the property and likely making offers as well. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and then kind of the same thing that we've been seeing all year, uh, just the number of listings is significantly uh, lower <laughs> than, than it has been. We need it to, to come up a little bit more um, than, it need, than it currently is. Um, so for example, October 2020, the number of new listings is 1325, whereas last month it was 1426. So it's actually going down um, with each subsequent month. So we we have a, a, a supply shortage, that's for sure. Are you guys well, seeing the same thing up there? 
Yeah, but what about like year over year? Because I always think the year over year is a lot more important metric. That's why I always look at. So interestingly, it's more than last year, uh, October of this, uh, October 2019 compared to October 2020. Um, there's about a uh, 75 um, more listings this year than last year at this time. So that's interesting because we I we saw the same thing. Like there was a I use the word surge, you know, lightly, but there seemed to be like a surge of listings for October, which is very uncommon for this time of year. It looks like mm -hmm. you guys are experiencing because normally, you know, after Labor Day, listings drop off every single month until the springtime or new listings every month yeah. drop off to the springtime. So you guys saw more new listings this month than you did October 2019 as well, huh? That's correct. Huh. What about the prices? Because <laughs> we saw, we've seen some pretty outrageous price appreciation in Denver. Yeah, likewise. Um, just going to median, I think median is probably a better uh, um, number to look at. So October 2019, the median price was 325000 October of 2020, it was 375000 Wow. That, that's a huge jump, in my opinion, um, between just one year's time. So are you guys seeing the same thing where it's, I mean, again, that's a 15% increase in prices and we're right around that same in Denver, but a lot of that has to do is like, at least in, in Denver Metro, the market as a whole is selling a lot more like million dollar plus homes and condos. It's like 115% more than last year. Are you just seeing a lot more of the more expensive homes being sold that's pulling up the average? No, my understanding is that it's, uh, well, median priced homes that are actually just being uh, bid up due to supply and demand and, you know, people's purchasing power is increasing as well due to the lower interest rate. So I think it's just a perfect storm of kind of driving all the prices up pretty significantly. We don't wow. have a ton of high end inventory down here. Okay. Wow. That is <laughs> impressive, but I mean, that's also not sustainable long term. Yeah, I agree. Because we're starting to um, crest above uh, the affordability factor for the median income in Colorado Springs. So that's kind of what I look at is um, median income is about 60, 65,000 for household income. Um, so I don't know, 375 just seems like kind of a bit of a stretch for given that level of income. So, you know, I would expect things to sort of uh, start to go back down to the lower 300s for an affordability factor at some point. So you think you we might see like some negative appreciation or negative price change next year? Is that what I'm hearing that's you say? That's my guess. Yeah, that's my guess. If, if um, inventory starts to level out a little bit more and interest rates sort of go back up to closer to what they had been in, in more recent years. I think, I think so personally, but that's just my guess. So is it worth based on this and other data? I mean, so should people wait six months? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's that significant. Um, okay. I, you know, I would keep shopping for sure. And you're in a contract on a place too that you close on I think next month, right? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not worried about little blips like that for okay. long term. What about your months yeah. of inventory? Oh my goodness, this is this is crazy. So the month supply for this month for October is 0.4 <laughs> compared to last year this time it was 1.2 and last month it was 0.5. So it's it's gone down even from last month in terms of of supply. That's lower than what we're seeing here in Denver. Even we're at like 0. 0.6, nothing significantly lower, but even slightly lower. But this is something like I want the we I want to we should talk to listeners about because you know obviously like these are very turbulent times, mm -hmm. and people talk about well I'm gonna you know sit and wait or what should I do and you know I think this inventory is just a great uh, metric for basic supply and demand. So if no new inventory came in the market and buyers kept buying up properties they would buy up all the inventory in 0.4 months, which is basically two weeks, which is 
absurd for a market the size of the Springs market. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. I mean, uh, it can definitely be frustrating for buyers out there um, in terms of just, you know, you see something and it's gone. And so I totally understand <clears throat> people getting a little frustrated for it, it, homeowners and investors alike. But, you know, I think just kind of keep your nose to the ground and, and keep trying and eventually you'll, you'll be able to, to get something. And I was just, I'm sorry, I'm looking at your screen surge and I'm just like bouncing around the data. So last October you had about 1500 homes down there. Mm -hmm. So this October at 650, that's a yeah. huge drop off. Yeah. So you're it's... below a thousand properties right now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's really kind of crazy. I know um, I had a buyer that was in, in the market for a house hack um, that she wants, you know, to make sure to balance uh, for her family's needs. And she said, there's really only one on the market that, that works for us. And I said, okay, well, let's do what we can to get it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, usually you have at least a few to pick from, but um, yeah, it's really slim pickings down here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, people can't be too picky right now, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And did you, um, have you, do you know the difference in like just the basic inventory and months of inventory for like single or like, you know, detached homes versus condos and townhomes? Cause we saw a, uh, a, a lot bigger change in, you know, uh, demand and just, you know, overall properties under contract for detached homes and condos and townhomes in Denver. I'm curious what the Springs is like. Um, I would say that it's even tighter for condo townhomes compared to single family homes. Um, just generally, there's less supply of condos and townhomes, and those are even further restricted. M my guess has to do with the fact that they are typically at that lower price point. So there's probably even more demand um, of people scooping those up. So um, just looking at the stats from the, the Pikes Peak MLS, um, my month supply of condo townhomes is 0.3. Oh my which, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so what's so the total just, inventory down there for condos and townhomes and like act, total active inventory? 56. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're in a double digit. Yes. So, so I mm -hmm. guess, I mean, yeah, I just, again, I don't know the Springs marketing like I do the Denver. So just, you guys just overall have a lot less attached properties than we do. It sounds like you just, I mean, obviously volume wise, but also just percent wise of total market share. It sounds like. Yes. I, I would definitely agree with okay. that for sure. 56. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So overall, okay. Yeah. You're just, okay. So overall, basically you're seeing this same stuff we're seeing up here in Denver. Yep, just okay. uh, you know, slightly smaller scale, just because we're a smaller city down here. So same story. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think the next stat that we wanted to to highlight is the total sales year to date through October um, for 2020. It's the highest it's been in the past five years at 14,482. And what have the past years been? Um, they're hovering in the, I would say, on average, about the mid thirteen thousands. So about a thousand dollar, or excuse me, about a thousand units more um, this year, year to date. Wow. Okay, so you guys are gonna probably overall like exceed for the whole year, exceed your sales volume, or total mm -hmm. unit counts, so what you've done the last five years as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then same thing for total under contract, not surprising um, that this one is pretty significantly higher uh, in, in 2020 as it was for the past several years also at 2,642. So that means that there's 2,600 units that are under contract right now. Can you, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. So this just made me think of something, because this is a really interesting thing we saw in Denver starting about two or three months ago. 
Um, and I don't know if you have this data from Pikes Peak. And just so people know, like we have completely two different MLSs and they report data differently and have different, you know, data they report as well. But one of the things that we, you know, up here we could see was that the last two or three months, we've actually had more properties in our contract than there's been total inventory on the market. Are you, do you have that inverse going right now? Like, or do you even have that data from Pikes Peak? I don't think that we have that information, oh, but that stinks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cause that, that was something that was just fascinating to me. And obviously like that can not last for very long. No, at some point it's going to have to level out. I would imagine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I would think so. But I mean, yeah, so you're even, you're, yeah, you're way above under contracts than you were the last three years and slightly above back in 2016. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just on fire down here. And then a similar type of uh, metric that we use average days on market. So we're looking at 21 days um, for October 2020. It's exactly the same as last month, September 2020. And then if we look at October of 2019, it was 29 days on market, which I still think is very low, um, but it's just even lower now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then a very telling uh, chart that we have here is the average and in, in median sales prices. And uh, for, for the viewers that aren't able to see this chart, it is steadily increasing. Um, this one captures two years worth of data. So October 2018, we started at 305,000 as the median sales price. Then if we go to October, 2019, it's 335,000. So it's a pretty big jump, 30,000. But then if we go to October, 2020, it's 383,000. So very big jump between this year and last year. Wow. Yeah, this is fascinating. What else, what other stats do you have? <laughs> Um, so we have a homes for sale um, chart also, which I, we've touched upon this and you know earlier in this conversation that it's um, this chart is just showing it decreasing uh, pretty substantially. So October of 2020, we have 881 homes for sale. Uh, if we look last year, it was 1,900, so half of the available homes for sale between last October and, and currently. <laughs> and then if we go down to new listings for October, um, as you touched upon Chris earlier, it is a little bit higher than, than before. Um, people are still listing their homes for sale even as we crest into the, the fall and winter months. So, um, this year is reflecting higher new listings in October than in the past five years also. And I was really surprised to see this, I mean, both down there and in Denver, just between COVID. I mean, we're recording this like a week after the presidential election. I mean, those are two very big factors that mm -hmm. often have, a, you know, at least the election has a big impact on, you know, people's uh, real estate buying habits and selling habits. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised to see the listings come up the last month because, I mean, we, we do need them for sure. So hopefully that trend continues. Yeah. So whether that's people so. realizing the world's not ending or they're selling and trading up, I don't know. But, yeah, keep uh, if you guys have property sell, let us know. We would <laughs> love to probably – we would love to buy them. <laughs> um, so then just going into residential home sales – it's a little bit lower um, this October 2020 compared to last month. It's a little bit higher than a year ago. Um, so we're looking at about 1,700 October 2020 for single family homes. And then for October of 19, we're looking at 1,400. So a little bit higher this year. And I think that's just due to what we were mentioning previously in that people are still trying still trying to be very active uh this this time of year this year okay so i got a few questions for you jenny 
So I always like, I think it's always good to sum up because, you know, we just fire hose to a lot of stats of people. Sum up a mm -hmm. few sentences, like what's going on the market right now? How would you describe it? If you had three sentences or so to describe it. <laughs> if, if I could, how about I only use one word? Okay. That works even better. I would say fire is absolutely on fire. So um, I, I, I would just recommend people that are in the market to buy. I would say, keep your nose to the ground, keep trying. It's probably going to be frustrating. <laughs> Inventory is low. There's a lot of demand out there. Um, but, you know, I would just keep persisting and I think that it'll pay off in the long run. Okay. Now, do you have any, because right before I record the Denver one, I got the Apartment Association of Denver Metro for like all the, mm -hmm. the big apartments rents. And it was interesting to see their rents. Um, have you seen any data on rent collection recently in the Springs? I have not. I have been searching for it and I haven't seen anything come up, but I would equally be curious to see how things are looking, at least in terms of more of the institutional um, investors out there, what they're seeing. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay. And from your own portfolio, you got any, uh, you know, any tenants not paying rent or on payment plans right now? Because you have all knock single families. Yes. So knock on wood, everyone has been um, paying right on time, if not a few days early. So um, we've been very happy with everyone's performance on that. Good. Awesome. Well, if uh, I'll throw this out there, because obviously, as you guys know, we are getting more data on the, the springs market. So if you're an investor out there and you want to share your data as far as how things are going with rent collection or things in general, please let us know because we've been able to gather some of that data in Denver and it's been extremely helpful. And we would love to get a bigger sample size down here in the springs as well. So Jen, anything else you want to say before we uh, hit the stop button here? No, I don't think so. Just uh, more of the same. Everything's really, really hot down here, but we're just kind of waiting to see how things level off towards the end of this year. Great. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for listening. You guys have questions, obviously reach out, or I should say reach out to Jenny. She's a Springs expert down here. And if you're trying to figure out how to put a game plan together to ride the trend in the Springs market, uh, talk to her. If you're looking to you know, buy a property, definitely reach out to us. I mean, both in the Springs and Denver market, we've got lots of investors out there buying house hacks, rentals. Um, some are selling in 1031 and other deals out there. So while it's very turbulent times out here and the market stats are favorable towards sellers, deals are still happening out there and we'd love to help you out. So Jenny, thanks a lot. Thank you.